Good afternoon. I'm Brent Wilsey, and welcome to today's Smart Investing Daily Briefing. We got some good ones today for people. And I'm Chase Wilsey. I mean, uh, I wouldn't say maybe one of your favorite retailers, but a well-known retailer you know may soon be gone. That's we'll kind of right. dive down deeper into that after another problem many Americans are having, unfortunately. Unfortunately, that's right. 21% of working Americans are not saving any of their income. I mean, I, I don't know what they're thinking they're going to do for the future, but that's a, that's a big part. So probably, you know, maybe it's 21% of people watching this as well are not saving. I wonder if that's true. Yeah, it, it's kind of crazy because there's a lot of studies out there that say, you know, 40% of people are concerned that they're going to outlive their assets. And mm -hmm. I kind of made up that 40%. I just know it's a large amount of people large concerned. Amount, yeah. well, I think we did that before. When yeah, that, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you would think, well, I'm concerned. I better save. Uh, not working out, unfortunately. Right. And just 25% are saving more than 10%. And the thing is, people said, about 38% 38, 38 people said, they just have too many expenses. I'm not going to save for myself first. That's just crazy. Well, what that kind of means is you may be living beyond your means. Yeah. If you have too many expenses, maybe you shouldn't go out and buy that new coach purse or those new coach shoes. No, they can buy coach. No, we don't own coach. Okay. Yeah. I almost, I almost said the other company, <laughs> but then I, I rephrased it. So <laughs> you, you got to make sure you understand your spending habits or maybe you should eat out maybe a little bit less, go to the grocery store. There's things you can do to really save for the future right. because it is so important. It's called pay yourself first. Yeah. And yeah. this one, this one just really got me, just kind of really spoke to the mm -hmm. laziness of people as 16.4% reason they're not saving? Well, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it just cracks me up. I mean, the, the ways to save are, it's not that hard. You set it up once and then it's automatically saving. Two yep. great things you can set up is just have automatic contribution to, you know, maybe your savings account or a brokerage mm -hmm. account or the easiest one, the best one, right. is an employer-sponsored 401k program, perhaps. Oh, yeah. yeah. We actually do have a wealth builder program in our firm that we actually do that for people because we know it's kind of hard to put that money away. So we actually started uh, doing the wealth builder. Uh, I like the next one as well, 16%. Uh, well, I just don't have a good job yet. When I get a good job, then I'll save. You know, what happens you never get a good job, you know? <laughs> well, exactly my point. Yeah. <laughs> and then the final one, 13% were struggling under debt. Mm -hmm. And I think this one may be a little bit different as a lot of times people kind of get overwhelmed by debt. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh my gosh, I have so much debt, I just have to pay all this off first. Maybe the wrong thing to do. If you have a low interest rate, you may want to keep that debt exactly. and start saving and allow that to compound over time. And unfortunately, there's people in their 20s that have debt, in the 40s and the 50s, so that debt may never be gone. <laughs> what you should do is start a good savings plan now and pay down the debt at the same time. So you're doing two things at once. Yeah, I had a conversation with a CPA actually. He said, I love debt. Debt's the greatest thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that means you got to understand that debt. Don't just go out and borrow like crazy on your credit cards. There are great sources of debt that you have to understand. There's good debt and bad debt. you got to know the difference. <laughs> so we should talk about that sometime as well. So but let's talk about the Sears Holdings, which is Sears, been around forever. And it looks like they're going away. The current price around eight dollars and eleven cents. The fifty-two week high is five dollars and fifty cents. Uh, I'm sorry, nineteen dollars eleven cents. The low is five dollars and fifty cents. Uh, they have no profit, uh, no cash from operations since two thousand eleven. We talk about companies like this. I've talked about J.C. Penney's on CNBC a few years ago. These companies eventually have to make a profits. And with uh, I want to say CNBC with Sears, that's not going to happen. And back in two thousand six. The share price, $162, and they've never been able to keep up pace with that share price. Yeah, and kind of what we looked at, we, we talked about don't overpay for the earnings of the company. Well, in 2006, the company had earnings per share of $5.58. That $162 per share, well, that's a PE of 29. Mm -hmm. Very, very high. So you were overpaying for it. You gotta understand what you pay for that. And again, a long way down to that, was it $8 from $162 per share. And it's taken some time. As I said, 2006 was that high. We're now in 2017. But again, no cash from operations. Uh, debt level here, $4.2 billion. Yep. And last year they had cash from operations, negative $1.4 billion. High debt, negative cash flow, not a good combination. And, and what they're doing is they, they issued about $1.2 billion more in debt. They're now selling off assets like Craftman Tools and so forth. It's in a decline. That's why you've got to always look at the fundamentals as far as what you're paying for the earnings of a company because this was an exciting company uh, back in 2006. Like, oh, yeah, this is great. And Eddie Lampert is going to be the CEO. And that was great. Nobody wanted it. Uh, we also talked about uh, Under Armour. Same thing. We saw that at 50. Now it's like 18. It continues to happen. We can't drive home enough. 
Look at what you pay for the earnings of a company, current and forward, and do not overpay for it. I don't care how excited you are about that company, it's gonna come and burn you sooner or later. One, one thing I wanna point out, we're not gonna say that Sears is gonna go bankrupt tomorrow. No. I actually read a great, called a periodical, um, yesterday saying they're almost having that bankruptcy happen outside of bankruptcy. So mm -hmm. they're selling off assets, and then at some point, no one's gonna issue them debt anymore because they know they're not gonna get paid. So again, they're selling off assets, properties, and then at some point that cash flow is only temporary and then it's like, uh oh, have nothing right. left to sell and other companies are gonna say, yeah, we're not gonna buy those from you, we'll buy them from you when you go bankrupt. <laughs> and they could go bankrupt tomorrow, next week, next month, maybe three years from now. But again, be careful what you pay for a stock. So, any questions you have, contact us here at the firm, Wilsey Asset Management, 858-546-4306, that's 858-546-4306. And I just realized we have a workshop coming up, don't we? Yeah, I was going to say, or you can go to our website, yeah. smartinvesting2000.com, and at that website, you can register for that workshop on April 11th. It'll be held at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Mission Valley. It's a dinner. It's a dinner. Oh, we're doing well, a dinner. Well, I want to do a dinner, but it's appetizers, but it's not, yeah. not usually during the, in the uh, morning, but this will be in the, uh, the evening. Yeah, I was going to say it's held at, I believe, 5.30 or 6.30 is when it starts. I think 6. I yeah. Down. Yeah, so one of those times. But check again, Tuesday night, <laughs> April 11th, you can check the details at our website, smartinvesting2000.com.